Joseph Damales. You won the giveaway from last week. And big congrats to T. Jones. You won this ASM 298. Thanks for watching the Todd McFarlane interview. Enjoy your trending comics list. Sitting at the table with an overstreet price guide advisor, Russ Bright, and I wanted to show this to you, man. We got this 1990s Wolverine Marvel trading card, and you know what it says on the back, right? It absolutely does. It says that his first appearance is Hulk 180, guys. Marvel knew in 1990 that it was 180, and all of us 90s kids knew that it was Hulk 180. It wasn't until Wizard Magazine started mucking around with this whole 181 stuff. I mean, come on, guys. You know what it is. All right. Well, we also have something else on the back of this that I thought was pretty interesting. It does does say that Wolverine's win percentage was 64%. Now, that may not sound very high to you, but in baseball terms, I think that's like Hall of Fame status. Absolutely, yeah. All right, comic fam, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> You're here for the knowledge, and we are also here to chat about the trending comics this very week. Slap that like, and let's get into it at number 10 with some fire storytelling. Number 10 this week, we have Shadecraft from Image Comics. This is selling for $12 right out of the gate because it came out this week with the news that it is being optioned by Netflix. I was able to get my hands on a copy. I'm getting Buffy meets something is killing the children vibes. Okay. And hearing that it's already optioned before any news about something is killing the children, it makes a little more sense to me because the narrative is a little bit lighter, although it's still dark. We have Zadie Lou, a protagonist who's afraid of her shadow, but for good reason. The shadows are there and she's the only one who can see them and they're there to cause a ruckus and to kill individuals. Joe Henderson and Lee Garbett combined their talents beautifully in these panels, drawing such stimulating 2 and 3D imagery of shadows that just overtake the panels. It's going to remind you of another image title, Skyward, which was so stellar because it's done by the same creative team. Keep an eye out on the Zoo or Zoo variant that was already pre-selling for above $100 on cover art alone. Those shadows leap off the pages. Now, another great book. We have number nine on the list, TMNT, The Last Ronin, number two. This is the Kevin Eastman WonderCon 2021 at home variant. Now, my friend Aiden hit me up on Instagram and let me know about two weeks ago that this is available. I went and bought my copies. Mine showed up yesterday, and unfortunately, they were damaged. No. It's so unfortunate, but $40 solidly on this book. And you know what? The fact that there was four months between issue number one and issue number two did not deter any collectors. We saw Michelangelo in the bed, the last panel of issue number one. And the fact that we get to get more of his backstory for this issue even better, and a gorgeous variant to boot. The comic fam needs to be keeping up on their TMNT last Ronin. IDW is bringing the heat. April O'Neil in this comic book is a badass. In this dystopian future, she's missing limbs. She's been training, just like Michelangelo's been training. And we also get to meet the descendant of Shredder. We also get to see Casey Jones, but not the Casey Jones that you know. No, we get to see the daughter of April O'Neil and Casey Jones. We get to meet Casey Marie Jones. Comic fam, you gotta check out this book. And I wanna hear if you've read it, what you think in the comment section below. Number eight on the list, we have Strange Tales, number 179. This is the first appearance of Pip the Troll, Ooh. who's another one of these characters that Jim Starlin created. $75 average sales, $275 for a CGC 9.6. Now, we were talking about Pip the Troll a few years ago when Peter Dinklage showed up at the airport with dyed orange hair. I mean, this is crazy, but the fact that he's back on the list this week, something must be blipping on this radar, Tom. Now we're seeing some rumors appear on the internet this past week that in the upcoming Eternals movie, that not only Pip the Troll is going to be making an appearance, but he's there to introduce Star Fox. Not that Star Fox. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the N64 lovers in the community. <laughs> no, that, that's coming another day. Now we're seeing an 800% increase in copies sold in just a week. Wow. Now that's happened quick, but back when Peter Dinklage dyed his hair, this was like four years ago, members thought he was going to be Pip the Troll. Mm -hmm. He would do something else completely in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We also saw James Gunn doing a shout out, an Easter egg with that like 90s troll doll, you know, with the orange hair. Right. But that also was probably just a shout out to the fans, you know, giving them some love. Because Jim Starlin loved this character. He would use him multiple times. This lackadaisical, cigar-smoking, drunk troll is fantastic. And if we see him hit the screen, I think this book can shoot up even more than it has been. Now, it's actually interesting that you use the word lackadaisical because he is actually part of the lackadaisian race. And whenever they drink alcohol, that's when they turn into these degenerate trolls. So it's really interesting how this character basically turns from an upstanding, upright citizen into 
to a troll when he drinks some alcohol. I don't know if there was any Jim Starlin underlying themes there, but that's what we have, guys. Could we see Pip the troll? I hope so. We all know what he keeps under his loincloth. Tom, you never know when you're going to be ready for s'mores. Pip the Troll keeps marshmallows under his loincloth, comic fam. Shout out to the Infinity Gauntlet crossover comics. <laughs> and let's give a shout out to the best comic book app that's in existence. We're chatting Key Collector Comics. And if you use code Tom 101, you're not going to get a free one week subscription anymore. That's not happening. I'm sorry, comic fam. We're giving them two weeks now. That is incredible, Tom, because there are so many things to do with this app. I'm using it literally 10 times a day, if not more. You're going to need two weeks to check every single button and every single notice. You know what? It is a great app. You need to be using it if you're not. Support the show, enhance your collecting, and... Let's talk about number seven. So with every Disney Plus show, we're seeing a lot of good spec, but there's also a lot of bad spec here. So this next book may fall into the latter category. Number seven on the list is Black Panther number four, the first appearance of White Wolf. Bucky utters the words White Wolf in the show, but not this character. We have $20 average sales, $132 for a CGC 9.8. And we know that the past, Bucky's ultra-violent, mind-controlled state as he was known as the Winter Soldier, is something that is proving to be a struggle for him in the Falcon and Winter Soldier. But his time in Wakanda has saved his mental state and has changed his persona for the better. And he is now known as the White Wolf. But the comic book version of White Wolf is more similar to like the Flag Smasher because this is an entirely different character, a different person altogether. Comic fam, we have a 1,225% increase on name recognition alone. Keep in mind that this issue has the first appearance of White Wolf. A guy's name is Hunter, and he's attempting to endear himself to the king, and he ends up being the leader of Wakanda's secret police. This has literally nothing to do with Bucky or anything Falcon or Winter Soldier. Again, this seems like an odd spec that people are really just chasing the name, not necessarily what's actually happening in the show. And now we're at number six. We have Nightwing number 78 hitting $25 average sales. This book just came out. And it's less about spec and more about the publicity of this title getting that adrenaline shot that it needed. So before Future State, I had people dropping off of Nightwing left and right. People just did not like the direction that the series was going. But this issue, Tom Taylor and Bruno Redondo come together and they have completely and totally revamped the series. More fight scenes, more exciting things. They introduced a new character called Melinda Zuko, who is the mayor of Bloodhaven. Like really, they're doing a lot of great things. And you get to vote on a dog. You do get to vote on a dog, Russ. <laughs> DC kicked it to the community to decide whether or not this dog will live or die. Whoa. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding, comic fam. This dog has a name of Bitewing, and DC kicked it to the fans to decide what its name would be. What will we call her? What would we call this three-legged dog? We can't call her Champion. <laughs> That's already been done. No, we actually have the polls. They came in, and with a clear 48% of the vote, what do we have? Haley, the clear winner with 48% of the vote. But those of you who are voting at home, Blue did come in second place. This book sold out quick, man. Second print coming out April 27th. Whether it be because of the narrative, the hype that issue 79 is already causing, because we're going to get introduced to a sick villain called Heartless. I'm not sure. It could be because of Bitewing. Haley the dog, or it could be because of the explanation, the further relationship building of Alfred and Dick Grayson. The letter at the end of this comic book is going to make every fan of the Bat family so happy. Their relationship was so strong. And now that Dick Grayson has been inherited Alfred's fortune, did you know that he was incredibly rich? Yeah, comic fam, you got to read this comic book. It's going to get you into the run. And let's hit him with number five on the list. Number five on the list this week, absolutely zero surprise. Captain America, number 232. This is the first appearance of John Walker, who later becomes U.S. agent. $130 average sales, $900 for a CGC 9.8. I'm digging this show so much. And the fact that Wyatt Russell is playing John Walker, he is such a good actor. He really, all of the people making fun of him at the end of the first episode with his head all squishy. No, he looks fantastic. He's a great, tall Adonis. He's Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell's kid. Seriously, he is the type of guy who would be a normal person without super, super serum and turning into Captain America. I just hate it's dogging on him so much. We've already met Lamar Hoskins. 
He's part of the group, the Buckies, which is the team associated with John Walker, who has also appeared already by name in the show. And of all the antagonists introduced in this narrative, I think he's going to be the favorite of all of them. The Flag Smashers are cool, but I think it's something that's going to get tied up by the end of this series. We're seeing more about the power of Broker, but not enough to really get super excited about. I'm excited to see what happens with John Walker and where he ends up going in this run twice as many copies sold this week over last week and i really don't see this stopping anytime soon all right russ when i was a kid i was swimming in the florida beaches and i got stung by a jellyfish we were going jet skiing and we got like sea lice and got bit up i am not a fan of water and the only thing scarier than what's living under the sea is the sharks and the only thing scarier than sharks is king shark Oh, uh, oh, oh, uh. <laughs> dude, you sound like Sylvester Stallone. Oh my God. Number four on the list. Superboy number nine. This is a long spec that people have been talking about for a very long time. The Suicide Squad 2 trailer has dropped. Two of them, in fact, both of them look amazing. And King Shark looks ridiculously cool. Dude, he's eating people in the trailer. He looks badass. Sylvester Stallone's doing the voice. You Correct. know that James Gunn and him are homies. He was in Guardians of the Galaxy. But no one was anticipating how big of a drop this would be. And I think it's because people forgot how badass James Gunn is. $50 average sale, $500 for a high CGC 9.8 sale, 1,122% increase over last week. This book is hot and moving fast. But keep in mind about the DC Universal logo variants comic fam. A few months back, a 9.8 of this book when it was kind of at a lull sold for under $300 for a CGC 9.8. And there was a raw copy that sold this past week for above 800 bucks. Oh my God. I have one at the shop signed by Carl Kiesel, but it's personalized to Jeff. So no. if you know a Jeff that needs a DC Universe logo of this book, hit me up because the guru doesn't want it. No, he will not be buying that book. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at number three. But before we do, let's remind the community how they can support what we do and get comics from us every single month. Comic fam, you need to be a part of the Mystery Mail Call where we send out amazing variants every single month and exclusive comics. Link down below or go to Comic Tom 101 to sign up. This variant of Ha Ha number three that every member is going to be getting a copy of, one version, not both, is stunning. It's disturbing. It's beautiful. Maxwell Prince goodness, Ha Ha number three variant cover done by Zoe Lucky. Hit the description and Russ, take over number three, man. We got 80s goodness hitting the the list. All of you 80s kids out there. Number three on the list, Thundercats number one, $160 average sale and an astronomical $2,100 for a CGC 9.8. That's twice what it was last week. 168% increase in copies sold this week because we have news that there is going to be a half live action, half CGI version of this movie and it's supposed to be geared a little bit more towards adults, again, a little bit towards the kids. But for the most part, you want to get all those guys who are my age bringing their kids to have an excuse to go see Lionel, Panthro, and Snarf. I mean, this is going to be classic. The director, Adam Wingard, just finished up working on Godzilla vs. King Kong. His next project is supposed to be Face Off 2, so he's not going to be able to devote 100% of his time, energy, or effort to Thundercats until after that has wrapped. This may be one of those books where you see it hot now, it's going to cool off and lull, and then it'll spike again once we have more information. Be watching this book. And now we're at the list at number two with an affordable X-Men key. One of the first ones that I bought when I got into collecting, we have X-Men 282. The first appearance of Bishop, he's on the cover, but he's got that last page cameo. And this book's hitting $15 average sales, but get this comic fam, a $475 CGC 9.8 high. Now we've seen him in the animation show, fighting cable, kicking ass. We've seen him in days of future past, but it didn't really hit home to collectors and X-Men fans. Well, we're seeing since last October, people investing in this comic book, mm -hmm. but without any real clear spec reason besides the time travel connection. This is a character that likes to show up all over the timeline and considering that the Kang spec is in high gear, we got Loki coming and mutant keys that are being specced upon heavily because of their inevitable introduction, this low buy-in is looking better and better to collectors by the day. Comic fam, if you like what you see and if you like the information that Tom and I have been given this week, make sure you give a like, subscribe, comment down below if you own any of these books for a chance to win a giveaway book that we'll let you know after this next number. 
which is a repeat offender. Doesn't happen very often on this list, but you know, it was so hot, we had to give it to you twice. That's right, the number one trending comic in the world, courtesy of Falcon and Winter Soldier, we have... Truth, Red, White, and Black. That's right, Russ. Let's welcome to the list at number one, Truth, Red, White, and Black. Issue number one, the first appearance of Isaiah Bradley hitting $85 average sales and a high sale. It's up $200 in one week for CGC 9.8. 358 percent increase in copies sold over last week and there was already a massive spike last week this book has room to grow isaiah is one of those characters that was roundly ignored forever this was really not a book that anyone was thinking about and all of a sudden he finally shows up in falcon and winter soldier and hits the roof room to grow indeed and in seven days that room filled up now the question is will it maintain will it increase That is going to depend on how he's utilized in the last three episodes of Falcon and Winter Soldier. It's also going to depend on if there's going to be a spinoff series of sorts. I'm not too sure about that. But this character being introduced in the series is something that we were anticipating. Carl Lombly is killing it. He still has his powers. And I'm stoked to see where it's going to take us. Keep in mind that this book, as well as the Marvel must-haves reprint of it, are on that really bad paper. They take fingerprints really easily, and it tears really easily. Low-condition ones of these are totally out there. Getting a high-grade copy of this book is tough. With Eli Bradley being introduced, it's likely we're going to see more of Isaiah, but it's even more likely that they're setting us up for some type of Young Avengers narrative. Comic fam, what do you think in the comment section below? Did you watch episode three yet? I did. Keep it spoiler free in the comment section for your fellow members, but I do want to hear your thoughts about this series, especially compared to WandaVision, because it's so different. And as always, geek responsibly. Nuff. Said, comic fam, enter to win this Power Rangers 55 variant done by the God of War art director, Raph Grissetti. And link in the description to join Mill Geek Comics Patreon. If you need a shelf at a comic store, you want to get ongoing comic books shipped to you so you never miss a title again, join the Patreon, get free shipping, support what we do, and have a great weekend.